Two guys are stuck in a broken car during a zombie apocalypse. They can't fix it and leave for three days, and the supplies are running out. Will they be able to get out? The story takes us to the world during a zombie apocalypse. Two baseball friends, Mickey and Ben, are among the few survivors. They are forced to wander through the forests and provinces of New England in search of provisions, periodically defending themselves from bloodthirsty zombies. In reality, the post-apocalyptic world turns out to be very boring, and most of the time the guys have nothing to do. Ben adapted to the new reality faster than his friend. He learned how to kill zombies and get food with improvised means. Mickey, on the contrary, is afraid to take up arms and prefers to disconnect from reality with the help of music in his headphones. During another sortie, the guys find an abandoned car. A zombie woman climbs out of the driver's seat, but Ben reacts instantly and shoots her in the head. The guys are lucky, the car immediately started up and now they will be able to continue their forced journey on wheels. Mickey offers to stop by his ex-girlfriend's house to look for provisions there. As Ben searches the house for zombies, Mickey gets nostalgic in his former lover's room. He takes a new disc from her dresser for his player, after which he smells her clothes and perfume. Ben, on the other hand, chooses only what can be useful to them on the way, and thus finds two battery-operated walkie-talkies among the things. The guys take blankets and pillows from the girls' room to spend the night in the car. Mickey is tired of hanging around abandoned houses and spending the night on the street, so he invites Ben to stay in the house at least for a while. Ben believes that staying in one place is not safe and they must constantly be on the move in order to survive. He reminds his friend that when things first started, they locked themselves in Mickey's house for three months along with his entire family. Staying in a confined space turned out to be a real hell. The company quickly ran out of food, and Ben had to kill the dog so that the family would not starve to death. In the end, the zombie still broke into the house and only the two friends managed to survive in the carnage. Mickey has to agree with his friend and they continue on their way without a final stop. One day, Mickey finds walkie-talkies and inserts batteries into them. He and Ben decide to check the range of the radio and suddenly pick up someone else's signal. The guys listen to the conversations of other surviving guys, where they discuss the shopping list for people from the camp. For the first time in a long time, Mickey hears other people's voices. From their dialogue, he understands that somewhere not far from them there are people who continue to live as before. They celebrate birthdays, watch movies and always have something to eat and sleep. Mickey decides to intervene in order to ask to join them in the camp. A male voice from the radio rudely answers him so that he does not clog the airwaves and says that there is no place for them in the camp. The voice also asks the other person, named Annie, to stop any contact with the guys. In desperation, Mickey tries to negotiate with the strangers, but they cut off the connection. Ben calmly accepts what happened and offers to forget about this conversation, but his friend cannot accept the refusal and continues to try to contact Annie. Ben is ironic about Mickey's actions. He tells his friend that he is too romantic about the stranger and hopes in vain that she will turn out to be a sultry beauty from the films who will save him from the zombie invasion. Ben, on the other hand, is more realistic and advises Mickey to follow his example in order to survive. Friends arrive at an abandoned motel. Mickey goes to check the building and quickly regrets it dash zombies were locked in one of the rooms. Ben has to take the hit again and protect them from the dead. He tries to persuade his friend to join him and learn how to kill zombies, but he does not see the need. Soon Mickey gets a chance to face the zombies one on one. Ben goes for a swim while Mickey is fast asleep in the car. Because of this, he does not hear how the girl's corpse is approaching the car. The zombie comes very close and makes awkward attempts to get inside, from which the guy finally wakes up. Mickey is very scared and does not know what to do next and how to defend himself. He finds himself alone with a zombie for the first time, so he desperately tries to shout for Ben to save him. After watching the actions of the corpse for some time, the guy realizes that she does not understand how to get inside and can rub against the car forever. Then the guy realizes that even though what's in front of him now is a zombie, she used to be a pretty girl. Since Mickey has spent many months without intimacy, he decides to take advantage of the situation and satisfy his needs by looking at the girl. The climax of their romantic moment is interrupted by Ben who returns to the car and shoots the zombie in the head. Every day the tension between friends increases. They set off again and search the abandoned houses. At some point, Mickey loses his temper and tells his friend that they will stay overnight at the house. Ben makes concessions, but in return takes the player from Mickey. He explains this by saying that Mickey runs out of all the batteries and puts their lives in danger, because he might not hear the approach of the zombies because of the loud music. Ben tries to explain to his friend that they should work as a team and help each other survive. After his friend's words, Mickey freaks out again and leaves. In the room, Mickey tries to contact Annie again. The girl finally answers him and tells the guy that she can be exiled because of a conversation with him. She warns the guy that the camp of survivors is not at all what Mickey imagines it to be, and asks him to give up the idea of joining them. The guy is ready to leave Ben alone to join them, 
but Annie again sends him away in a rude manner. Meanwhile, Ben finally allows himself to relax a bit. He turns on the player at full volume, drinks and dances with a gun. In the middle of the night, he hears suspicious sounds outside the house and takes zombies hostage. Ben decides to give his friend an extreme survival lesson. He leaves a bat next to the sleeping Mickey, launches the captured zombie into the room and closes the door. Awakened, Mickey begs his friend to let him out, but Ben insists that he deals with the zombies with a bat. For some time, Mickey's frightened screams and the sound of blows can be heard from the room. Ben carefully opens the door and sees his friend breathing heavily, completely covered in zombie blood. Angry, Mickey rushes at his friend and beats him up. Despite this, Ben is happy that Mickey was finally able to stand up for himself and kill the walking dead for the first time. Mickey tells his friend about his conversation with Annie and that she asked him to forget about the camp. Having lost hope for a normal existence, the guy begins to cry. Ben calms him down and they go on their journey again, enjoying the beautiful nature and finding entertainment around them. Friends go fishing together, share life stories, play baseball with apples, and eat fruit straight from the tree. One day they stumble upon an empty car, abandoned right in the middle of the road. The enterprising Ben decides to drain the gas out of it, but Mickey notices that the hood of the car is still hot. The guys realize that they are not alone and call out to the owner of the car. Nobody answers them, so Ben decides to finish what he started and does not immediately notice how a stranger takes Mickey hostage, putting a knife to his throat. The man demands to give him the keys to the guy's car, otherwise he will kill Mickey. Ben offers to take the stranger, but he plans to leave for Arizona and does not need any traveling companions. Then Ben tries to appeal to his voice of reason and asks from whom does he want to run away, that he is ready to kill an innocent person for it. The stranger says that some people promise to let him go and provide him with provisions and his own truck if he worked for them all winter. But these people lied and now he needs to run so that they do not get to him. The man gets angry again and starts threatening to cut off Mickey's eye. To calm him down, Ben says that the keys are in the car's ignition. The guy promises the stranger to throw away his gun and not stop him from leaving if he frees Mickey. The man agrees, pushes the frightened guy away from him and gets behind the wheel. But the keys are not in the ignition, but in Ben's back pocket. Realizing his mistake, the man tries to run into the field, but Ben kills him, leaving Mickey shocked. The guys are arguing about the correctness of this act, when they suddenly notice that uninvited guests have arrived. A woman's voice from the car informs the friends that they have come in peace and just want to pick up an abandoned car to fill it with gasoline. Mickey sees nothing wrong with this, while Ben remains alert and points a loaded gun at the stranger's car. A pretty girl comes out of it and a big man with a gun in his hands. She orders the assistant to grab a canister instead of a gun and together they come closer to the guys. The girl asks the guys who was driving the car and Ben lies that the driver was bitten by a zombie and therefore had to be killed. The stranger continues with the conversation and asks if this man said something about himself and where the car came from. Ben understands that this is exactly the group that pursued the man and decides to pretend to be a fool. He says the driver didn't say anything out of the ordinary. Mickey, on the other hand, does not understand the danger of the situation and recognizes in the girl the other person on the radio, Annie. Realizing they've been found out, Annie shoots Ben in the leg and points the gun at Mickey. She threatens to kill the guys if they follow them to the camp. Annie takes the keys from them and tosses them into a field so they can leave while the guys look for them. Mickey unsuccessfully tries to find the keys among the thickets of grass. It begins to get dark and Ben offers to wait out this night in the car and resume the search in the morning. In the middle of the night, Mickey hears a suspicious noise. They turn on the headlights and see that a crowd of starving zombies is moving towards them. Because of the injury, Ben cannot go far, so the friends become hostages of the car. By morning, the car was surrounded on all sides by the dead. They can't get inside, so they just moan and rock the car from side to side. So the guys spend several hours locked up. Mickey is paralyzed with fear while Ben tries to find a way out of the situation. He shoots the dead, but there are too many of them to get out. Ben loses his patience and blames Mickey for what is happening. If he had left Annie alone, they would not have been trapped. A few more hours pass. Friends understand that their supplies of water and food will not last long. Now the guys can only guess who will surrender first, them or the zombies. The next day, friends cover all the windows with blankets, hoping that the dead will leave if they do not see them. But the zombies never leave their prey. In order not to completely go crazy, the guys decide to get drunk and have a good time, despite the fatality of the situation. In the morning, friends realize that they cannot delay the inevitable for long. They need to try to get the keys and get out of this hell. Ben asks Mickey to get outside and do whatever it takes to survive. He asks his friend to leave him alone and escape if he can't find the keys. Mickey promises he won't leave his friend. Having smoked his last cigarette, he climbs out through the hatch to freedom. For Ben, the most agonizing time of his life begins. He spends long minutes that seem endless to him waiting for his friend. The guy is almost losing hope, when suddenly he hears a knock from above. Filled with joyful excitement, he opens the hatch and lets Mickey inside. 
He asks his friend if he was able to find the keys, but notices that something is wrong with him. Mickey shows his bloodied hand and Ben realizes he's been bitten by a zombie. At this moment, the last hope dies inside Ben. Mickey in tears asks his friend what to do, but he has already made the only right decision. Ben shoots Mickey right in the head, then screams in pain, tearing him apart from the inside. Ben spends the next few days in prostration, trying to recover from the death of his only friend. After some time, he communicates by radio with Annie. The guy tells her about the trick they did to escape from Mickey's parents' house. The guys lured the zombies to one side of the house and let them in, while they themselves got out the other side. Ben tells Annie that he will try to repeat this trick. If he survived, he would find her and put a bullet in her head. The guy turns on Mickey's player and removes the blankets from the car windows to get the attention of the zombies. While they crowd in front of the car, he climbs out through the trunk. At the end of the story, we see Ben limping down the road. He was left alone without provisions and weapons, and a crowd of hungry zombies follows him on his heels. But now the guy has a conscious goal that moves him forward, he is going to avenge the death of his best friend.